Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Autodesk Fusion and this shape we have in front of us, we are just going to look at it from some different directions and you will see that from all directions looking, the shape takes the form of an ellipse so this is what, uh, according to my knowledge, is called an ellipsoid which is basically a squished sphere or stretch sphere depending on how you think of it and that's what, what I'm doing. I'm doing a revolve and I'm doing a scale. So I'm just going to give this, this is a spoiler. I'm using the scale command. And we're going to do look, have a look at some specific things about the scale command, how we can do that non uniform and so forth. But there is a different workflow that we see, sometimes see people trying to do. And that's this one. Less good one. Uh, it's really basically sketching parts of an ellipse and then doing some extrude. You see I'm using a lot of steps here with the infusion, doing surface extrude and a loft and stuff like that. And yes, it creates something that looks close to an ellipsoid, but there are some problems problems with the curvature. And yeah, you can do it this way. If there are more steps, this is much easier. This is the good version. This is what I call the less good version. It still works. But the big problem here is the curvature of shapes. If we turn on analysis and curvature map, you can see there's something strange going on here. This, that's because you can see the edges highlight here. This is like one quarter and things are going on. The last command doesn't understand. I want to make an ellipsoid. It just tries to connect the shapes. If we have a look at the version where I've done a scale, you can see how the curvature is following the shape we want. The curvature should be changing. So I have a band here, it's less easier to see. And it turns even more obvious. I'm going to turn off the curvature map. You turn on the isocurves. Isocurves show us how the curvature flows over a body. And I also activate the curvature comb. So you can see the curvature combs are like broken here. And if we zoom in, you can see it's also broken across the, we call it the equator of the shape. If we move over to the good version and turn on isocurves, you can see the curvature combs are nicely connected in one direction. And this is really good. Have a look at the top. We can see if the curvature combs are going like uh, like low curvature, and the curvature goes up as it goes over the corner. But and there are no breaks. <clears throat> this is of course very good if you're going to do more edits to the shape. Broken curvature like this can be a pain when you start adding fillets and when you do connection with other surfaces like that. And of course, the most important part. This is a much shorter workflow, but it has this scale command, which you have to do some thinking about how you use it. So. I have an empty design file here and I'm going to deliberately make a sphere. I'm going to make this slightly off center just to show you some stuff with the scale command. So I'm going to create a sketch. Our first step is, of course, a circle because we're going to create a sphere. Somewhere out here, I'm going to do a line. I'm not telling you where all the commands are. You need to know basic usage of Fusion before you do this. So like this, the first thing I'm going to do, I want to give this circle a diameter. So I'm going to D on my keyboard and select this. And I'm going to call it uh, S uh, circle outer diameter or sphere outer diameter equal to, let's just do it 50 millimeter. It's not important. The thing that is important, I don't need millimeters. I'm, I'm working in millimeters. So I'm going to stand in millimeter. If we work in inches, you change millimeter to inches instead. So let's do it 50. So Fusion will give this a 50 millimeter dimension. You can see when I place the cursor over. So wait, remember this, this uh, parameter, because all our parameters are saved and I named it, has a unit. It has a unit of millimeters. And now I'm going to dimension, as I said, I want this slightly off center, 35. Um, let's move it further in this direction. Let's do it 45. So this sphere slightly off centered from our region point. We have a fully defined sketch. Open up a sketch like that. Gonna finish sketch. Gonna use the revolve tool. You find it under create, revolve, select our profile, select our axis. This can also, of course also be done with uh, like partial revolves, like a half sphere or a quarter of a sphere, or whatever you want to do. The scale works the same thing as long as you select the correct center point. We're gonna go to that, get to that. So I'm done with sphere. I'm gonna hit OK. And now I'm gonna do our second feature that's gonna be modify and scale. Some things to check here. First thing is the entity. And this is sometimes Fusion auto selects uh, points, and that can sometimes be correct or be wrong. 
Uh, I like to always check that I get the correct. And in this case, of course, we want the center point of a sketch of a circle because that's the center point of our sphere. Gonna select that. Uh, scale types are gonna be non-uniform because we want to do uh, ellipse shapes in all directions. If we're only doing it in two directions, you have a circle in one direction, it's easier just to revolve the ellipse. In this case, we want to stretch it and or squish it in all three axes. So let's start with the X axis. I really don't care what dimension I had of the sphere. I'm going to use that as a parameter. And what we need to remember, X scale, Y scale and Z scale are non uh, units. It has, it can't handle millimeter or anything. It needs to be just a simple number. And one, of course, is non-scaling. 0 0.5 is going to be half the size, and two is going to be twice the size. But we need, we do not need to care about that scale factor because we're going to ask Fusion to calculate it. So let's say in the x direction, I want it to be 113 millimeters. And here's the important part. Uh, I'm going to divide this with my sphere parameter, and the sphere parameter had a millimeter unit. So I'm going to type in millimeters here. You see it gets red because Fusion says, I don't handle millimeters. No problem. I'm going to divide this with my circle OD from my sketch. And I do that because this parameter here has a unit of millimeter. I place the millimeters on the top and they will cancel out. And this is a non unit parameter now. Y scale, uh, so Y is back to front. Uh, let's do that 75, 76, it happens to be millimeters once again. And the circle OD. And let's do what's going to do. So let's do it 200 millimeters. My circle OD, like that. I'm going to hit OK. And by doing that, we started with the sphere and now squished it in all directions. We can do some inspection, of course, just check so we do not get uh, some strange we see. Yeah, that is good. We can, of course, also use the zebra analysis and have a look at those beautiful lines that mostly just creates uh, elliptic uh, seizures looking at that. Or we can do the ISO curves looking at the shape, adding the curvature combs. Scale it up and have a look, and we can see we have some nice. It's oh, oh, we have an odd number. Let's do that six. It makes oh, eight is better because the quadrants of a circle, like that, gonna scale that up. And we have a nice curvature. So, that is how I uh, create an ellipsoid and also show you how to use the scale command. The scale command can be very powerful, and but people often get stuck on how do I set the scale factor simply take the desired dimension divided with the dimension you already had in this case the circle had a 50 millimeter let's go back to the scale command so all these are 50 millimeters by hand so i type up type in the desired dimension here and divide it with the dimension the parts have right now and that gives me the scale factor so i hope you found something useful in the video with that said take care see you around and goodbye